Vanguard. It's a card game where you can become a leader and fight your way to victory. Imagine it. Imagination becomes your strength. Hey, what's up, card fighters? It's Dev from Dev's Utopia, and I got another Force Clan that really wants to be an Excel Clan for you today. Uh, in this uh, Draconic Overlord deck, we're going to be running 9 Grade 3s, 16 Grade 2s, 12 Grade 1s, and 17 Grade 0s. To start off our Grade 3 lineup, we're going to be running 4 copies of Draconic Overlord at the end. Its skill reads Auto Vanguard Circle. At the end of the battle that it attacks, activate one of the effects below but you cannot activate the same effect for the same turn. The first choice reads, if your hand has four or less cards, cost Counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1. Stand this unit and it gets Drive negative 1 until the end of the turn. Its second choice reads, if your soul has a card with Overlord in its card name, cost discard three cards from your hand, stand this unit and it gets Power plus 10k and negative 1 Drive until the end of the turn. Next, we'll be running three copies of Dragonic Overlord the Great. Its skill reads Auto Vanguard Circle. When placed, call up to one Dragonic Neo Flame from your drop zone to the rearguard circle. And then its second skill reads Auto Vanguard Circle once per turn. At the end of the battle that it attacked, if your soul has a grade 3, cost Counter Blast 1 and discard two cards from your hand. Stand this unit in one of your Dragonic Neo Flame and they get Drive negative 1 until the end of the turn. And last but not least, we're going to be running two copies of Dragonic Overlord. Its first skill reads, act Vanguard Circle and Rearguard Circle. Once per turn, cost Soul Blast 1, and this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of the turn. Its second skill reads, auto Vanguard Circle, once per turn. When its attack hits, cost Counter Blast 1 and discard 2 cards from your hand. Stand this unit, and it gets negative 1 drive until the end of the turn. Now to start off our grade 2 lineup, we're going to be running 4 copies of Dragonic Burnout. Its skill reads, act Rearguard Circle, once per turn. Cost Counter Blast 1 and put a Grade 2 or Greater card from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. Our main and most consistent retiring card. This, if anything, you gotta treat this like a bag of gold right now. And then we'll be running three copies of Dragon Full Armored Buster. Its skills reads Continuous, Vanguard Circle, and Rear Guard Circle. If your opponent has no rear guards, this unit gets power plus 3k. Its second skill reads, Auto, Vanguard Circle, and Rearguard Circle. When placed, cost Soul Blast 2, choose one of your opponent's rearguards, and retire it. Look at the seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one card with Overlord and its card name from among them, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. Then we're going to be running three copies of Rivern Strike the Cot. Its skill reads, Act, Rearguard Circle. Cost, Counter Blast 1, and put this unit into your soul. Choose one of your Draconic Overlord at the end, and when your opponent would call from hand to Guardian Circle for the battles that the unit attacked this turn, he or she must call two or more at the same time. And to end our Grade 2 lineup, we're going to be running two copies of Draconic Neo Flame. Its skill reads Auto Rearguard Circle. When your Draconic Overlord the Great attacks, until the end of the battle, that unit gets Power Plus 5k, then Cost Counter Blast 2, and that unit gets Critical Plus 1. To start off our grade 1 lineup, we're going to be running 4 copies of Flame of Hope Airmo. Its skill reads, Continuous Rearguard Circle. During the battle that it boosted, this unit gets power plus 3k. Its second skill reads, Auto Rearguard Circle. When your opponent's rearguard is retired during your turn, cost, retire this unit, draw a card, and counter charge 1. Next, we'll be running 4 copies of Red Dive Griffin. Its skill reads, Auto Rearguard Circle. Once per turn, when your opponent's Guardian is placed for the, for the battle that it boosted a Vanguard, cost, Soul Blast 1, choose one of those Guardians, retire it, and at the end of battle, retire this unit. And to end everything off, we're going to be running 4 copies of Sable Dragon Dragonu. Its skill is read, Auto, Vanguard Circle. When an attack hits, draw a card. Its second skill reads, Auto, Rearguard Circle. When your opponent's Rearguard is retired during your turn, cost, retire this unit, and draw a card. The Grade Zero lineup is really personal preference. Of course, run one starter as well as four heals and four draw PGs, but uh, it's really up to you if you need, if you think you need more draw support, by all means run six draw triggers. Uh, if you want to make your opponent regret saying no guard, run eight critical triggers. Uh, to go on to combos and strategies, you need to remember Red Dive Griffin makes a 2 to pass, a 1 to pass. 
That being said, you gotta really be careful what you do. You gotta make sure your opponent's sure of using all of those cards to guard because you can't just spring up out of nowhere and as soon as they put down or think about putting down a card, like immediately say, oh, retire it regardless, you know what I'm saying? It's really up to them uh, as well as, you know, you gotta wait and see who they do, officially clears their blockers. Especially if you're playing casually, you know, you gotta make sure that the person who's playing you is like confident that they're going to guard because sometimes they'll even say like no guard after thinking over it for a few seconds. So you really just gotta wait until they declare all of their guards before activating the skill. Dragonic Burnout is the best card to retire stuff because it basically tells your opponent, if you don't do anything about this, I'm gonna be able to use this skill once per turn every single turn that you allow me to be on the field. But you also got to take advantage of the fact that you have air mode as well as um, a Sable Dragon Newt because they allow you to get an extra two cards in your hand and just simply allows you to either have more fuel to attack them before you declare your attackers or if you just have more guard power. Uh, the combo of course is just always to call Burnout and then immediately just call air mode as well as uh, Sable and then retire something, uh, hopefully, you know, returning a uh, grade two or greater, uh, most likely something that isn't Dragonic Neo Flame, that is. Remember, if there's one card you don't really want to return to the deck, if there's one card you really want to be into the drop area, it's Dragonic Neo Flame. When you ride Dragonic Overlord the Great, he calls from the uh, drop zone. So basically it gives you a free plus one. So, don't be afraid to intercept with Neo Flame. Don't be afraid to intercept with any other grade twos because we're going to be able to recycle with Draconic Burnout. One thing to keep in mind is that Draconic Burnout and Full Armor Buster are the best of friends simply because every time you use Draconic Burnout skill, remember it's to bottom the deck, and then Full Armor Buster says even if you whiff your search for an Overlord card, you shuffle your deck. So basically allows you to be able to have a better chance to drive check those uh, grade twos and grade threes that you sent back at the bottom of your deck. It allows you to have a better chance of even drawing back those cards. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind. And another thing to keep in mind is make sure you pay attention to what you're kind of blasting. It matters. Always kind of blast the grade twos and graders because simply to put, if you do hit that heal trigger, you'd rather send the counter blasted grade two or greater card to, to your drop zone rather than the trigger that you counter blasted early game. Um, another thing is you really got to make sure you have an open mind as well as you got to look at your situation before you, you, you ride the great versus the end or the end versus the great. In my ideal game, I want to ride Dragonic Overlord, then Dragonic Overlord the Great, and then to end it off, and hopefully end the game, we're going to run, we're going to ride Dragonic Overlord the Ent. And boom, there you go, the Great Ent. Um, you really got to make sure you look at your situation beforehand. You just can't just go really nilly using everybody's skills back and forth. Uh, speaking of which and everything, you got to remember, if you simply do not have to go over with great, if you have like three copies of the end in your hand, hey man, there's nothing completely wrong with just saying, let's just go and try to swing for game with the end. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But I believe this entire combo really sets off when basically you use the great skills as much as possible. The next turn, your opponent's turn, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that the Vanguard hit is a no pass rather than a two to pass and etc you try to use the gray twos in your hand you try to use the triggers in your hand as much as possible make sure that your opponent doesn't hit and thin your hand as much as possible don't take the easy way out try to do those numbers try to use those critical triggers rather than just using a pg then after that on your turn we got to go for lord the end comes out of nowhere and says hey do you have less than or do you have four cards or less in your hand cool, I'm going to activate my skill. I'm going to be able to stand up at least one time. Hopefully, you'll be able to stand up and use uh, both those individual skills and, you know, swing for game. 
But if not in anything, remember, try to at least keep a PG in your hand when you do this skill. And not saying that, that you can't call a Dragonic Overlord to the field and etc. If you can pull off calling rearguards to the field and retiring stuff and etc. to thin your hand by all means. But at the same time and everything, you just got to make sure you thin your hand as much as possible so the skill can go off. You're going to drive check and get two cards to your hand. You got to do some simple math here. That being said, I want to make sure you understand Force 1 is the best way to go. A lot of our rear guards were either retired themselves, etc. Uh, so basically our great ones are going to be saying bye bye as the game continues. You've got to basically uh, place, uh, you know, force imaginary gift force markers on your rear guard circles so that they can be able to hit. You can't rely on always having air mode in the uh, rear guard circle behind your gray two or having a sable nude or even red dye griffin. They're not going to be there all the time. So you need to make sure that your units can hit at all times. That being said and everything, sometimes it's not a good idea to allow uh, your opponent to just completely get rid of your stuff. If you're going against another deck that says, uh, you know, they can retire or bind, you know what I'm saying, you'd rather you, you know, use the skills as much as possible and gain the advantage of your cards rather than allowing it to just get blown up or uh, bound by the end of the turn. Um, it's really a straightforward deck. Remember, you got to make sure to have Dragon and Neo Flame in the drop area. I cannot stress that enough. Like, if anything, that's like the one thing that I think is most important in this deck, other than, of course, trying to make that corny joke. And yeah, it's. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Personally, I've been seeing a lot of people that's just running uh, rather than just both, but I feel like running both isn't a bad thing. I feel like you just got to be open-minded to the fact that yes, these cards are supposed to be finishers, but at the same time, the end is a better finisher and the great is a good way to make your opponent waste their hand. Not every game is going to be where you swing with your main vanguard and victoriously win like the anime. We're not Aichi Sendo, we're not all this other car of these characters in the anime. We have to play smart, we have to make sure that we have a backup plan. We can't assume that we're going to hit those triggers when we need them at all times. So at the same time, you got to just be versatile as a player and just make sure that you read the situation, look at your damage, understand that you have to guard at certain times, etc. Psychalia is a thing, trust me. It's just not as portrayed as in the anime. But yeah, besides that and everything, we got one more video coming up this week. Uh, and that's going to be the hero engine for Nova Grapplers. Don't worry, I'm not going to make another Beast DD video unless they come up with more support ways, but that's besides the point. I uh, hope you guys have a nice day and everything. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I'll hit you guys up another time.